Greetings from the Utremer 55 Moonshot. Today we start the series of videos about my Atlantic crossing on this boat. And I guarantee you that you will not believe the ending of this story. Let's get into it. I'm gonna give you an A for effort. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, you know, sometimes people say, oh yeah, the seas were so big. But uh, guess on the video, it won't look the same. No, it'll look <laughs> just like little surf. As painful as it was to break up the band, it looks like we made a wise choice in having Megan get off the boat. Our time in Barcelona was filled with discussions with Utremer about whether I would captain the boat across the Atlantic. They decided they wanted to use their own captain, and we decided if that was the case, Megan wasn't going to come along. She's still recovering from illness, and we needed assurances that the ride would be comfortable. And that's really difficult in January in the North Atlantic, especially when there's a time crunch. The boat's got to get across for the Miami Boat Show. You didn't see that little kid just fell and he flew like this and landed with his cape and he thought about it and he's like, I'm all right. Because <laughs> he's only this far from the ground. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's a good reminder. You fall? Just get back up. Just keep going. It's kind of the, the sentiment I feel right now. Nick is about to head off to the Canary Islands to check out the situation. And you? And I'm headed to Austin to uh, recoup with my one of my best friends. I'm getting on an airplane in a couple hours, so I'm repacking again to uh, check out the situation on Moonshot. I am on the edge of my seat to see if Nick heads off across the uh, Atlantic. I'm the odd man out. What did you decide? <laughs> it's a very important decision. We've decided together with Robin that as soon as we will be gone, the official language on board will be French. So. <laughs> I normally won't do long trips with sailors I haven't done some miles with. Robin I had sailed with before. Great sailor, great drone pilot, great photographer too, and willing to climb the stick to get things done. All right, the problem that we were encountering with the uh, Iridium Go Exec has nothing to do with the Iridium Go Exec. It's an installation error, it's user error. This was very easily avoidable, but we were just in such a huge hurry when we left La Grand Mott. The issue is this, the Iridium Go Exec uses a different antenna than the Iridium Go. They look very similar, but they're not the same. Robin's up the mast. I'm down here finishing up the setup with the data hub and the Iridium Go exec. And I gotta be honest, it's it's really not that difficult at all. That's the thing about boat stuff, none of it is super duper complicated. It's just getting everything figured out before you actually have to use it in practice. This is why setting things up, sea trialing it, coming back, figuring it out is is really the best way to go. So before committing to this trip, I was there to evaluate the boat, but also evaluate the captain. I noticed that you write a lot of lists. I also write a lot of lists. Why is this so important? <laughs> to know exactly what you've got on board and where things are. And I write everything down so that I can remember and, uh, and we can check if we need to, uh, if we don't remember how it was, what was on board when we left. We can still have a trace of it. It's better to have it written somewhere. All right, I like this. We're speaking the same language. One more critical element, and then I'm going to commit to the trip. I need to know that the captain and I are on the same page in terms of routing. Let me try and explain. A performance boat like the Uchmer 55 
has amazing capabilities in terms of speed, but most importantly, light air and upwind performance. I know, I know, marketing, blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you what this means from a practical standpoint, what it really means on the ocean. It means you can sail when others can't, and that allows you more flexibility to choose your route and choose your comfort level. So let's apply that to this huge trip across the Atlantic Ocean. This is no small thing. If you take the route that I suggest, it's about 3,200 miles. But is that the shortest distance? It is not. A more direct route is 2,700 miles. In a boat like this, that could save you a couple days. And could the boat do it? Absolutely. The Uchimere 55 is a robust and very fast machine. But does the crew want to endure the rough ride that would be required? Call me a fair weather sailor if you want to, but I have absolutely no interest in bashing into bad conditions. And at this point at least, I thought Captain Jean-Marc and I were on the same page. I'm keeping my eyes on the weather. We've got a couple challenges right off the bat. A little bumpy to begin for two or three days. After that last wave goes through, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of weather challenges here, at least for the next week or so. We've got fairly strong or, or relatively strong trade winds, northeast winds that are gonna push us almost directly downwind towards probably about 16 degrees uh, north latitude. We're aiming for 16 degrees north latitude because as the next series of fronts come by in a week to 10 days, we'll remain in the stronger winds. If we go further north, we'll be affected by high pressure areas and we're gonna lose our speed. After looking at the forecast and doing some routing, it was my opinion we should probably wait a couple days to get the best winds and the best sea state. But we were under deadline and the captain wanted to get moving. Definitely not ideal, but in my opinion, good enough, as long as we pick the best route. What are we doing, Cap? <laughs> Waiting for the guy who is going to change our MMSI number. Yeah, a lot um, of people don't know what an MMSI is. Oh. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It's interesting. Pretty yes. crucial, though. It is very important so that the uh, saw system can find you and see who you are and in case of emergency or rescue operation there they can much easier much more easily find you and, and know what to do so i've seen one guy he doesn't want to do it i've seen another one he asked me to send pictures to him to see if he could do it or not so i've just done that i hope he can do it if he cannot i think we'll live without the change of mmsi number not the call I'd make if I were running this ship, but sometimes you have to put your faith in others. It's kind of difficult for me sometimes, to be honest. Oh, one more detail. Did you install the charts? No, the new um, card? No. Poor Jean-Marc. I'm sure I was pretty annoying with all my questions. Blame my years as being captain of my own ship and a proclivity towards hypervigilance. As I was trying to find my new role as crew and not captain, Robin was doing the dirty work of finding the goodies for the trip. Aside from the weather, in my experience, one of the defining characteristics of a passage is good snack food. I think we're going to be okay, guys. We've only got about 500,000 calories on board. Oh, uh, Capitan. Yes. You have a look at the boat. What do you think? Are we ready? We're almost ready. We are 85% ready. Let's go, guys. Oh, 
I was really bummed to be taken off on this grand adventure without my co-captain. My partner in crime, Megan, as you guys know from the past videos, got the illness and she headed back to the States to recover. And en route picked up yet another bug. Let's check in with her. <clears throat> Hello from Austin, Texas. Woo, I cannot believe I got hit with the flu. Wow, it has really been a challenge for me lately. And I really appreciate all of the very sweet messages in the comments, so thank you. I am here convalescing and trying to get better physically and mentally. So it's great timing this week for our sponsor, BetterHelp. It's like they knew I needed them. <laughs> BetterHelp is great. They make therapy so much easier and less intimidating for a lot of people because you can have therapy sessions over the phone, as a video chat, or even messaging, whatever's most comfortable for you. And they can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise that may be available in your city. It's so easy to get started. You just fill out an online questionnaire that asks you about the challenges you're going through and what kind of a therapist you would like. And they will match you within a therapist, in most cases, within 48 hours. If you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. So if you're going through a challenging time, I highly recommend BetterHelp. They have helped over 4 million people start to live a healthier, happier life. Clicking the link below helps support this channel and gives you 10% off your first month. Oh, I felt so much better after the call with my therapist and I'm ready to hop on a flight and rejoin Nick and continue this adventure. Hello, just getting done with my second three hour watch. And our watch schedule is three hour shifts for the three of us and then between noon and 6 p.m. I guess we're kind of all on watch. Time for us to spend together and uh, not feel like solo sailors, which is what it can feel like if you're just constantly rotating watch. Overall, pretty uneventful. We were pounding into it for a bit and finally decided to bear away. Cool to be on a boat that can point so high Right now about nine to 11 knots and the boat is going upwind at about seven. All right, that's the, that's the update from the first night at sea. I see the light downstairs. Jean-Marc is coming up, coming up next <laughs> after these commercial breaks. Closing up on 24 hours underway and it has been uh, pretty slow going overall. As expected, the wind has gone flat ahead of the next trough. The next trough is going to bring, uh, the next trough is going to bring some bouncing conditions and uh, probably some speed as well. So we're actually just kind of enjoying the mellow weather while we've got it because once the wind turns on, it's going to be several days before we see the uh, light stuff again. But not much action today. One kind of curious looking pirate ship on the horizon and a couple tankers and that's it. Otherwise, it's been a lazy day hanging out, eating good food. I'm just taking it real easy. Life is pretty civilized on a boat like this. Normal day-to-day -day stuff just kind of keeps going on.
If you know me or you've watched this channel for a while, you know I hate motoring. Yep, glassy sea, so there's not a whole lot of choice, but I was not too happy with the course we were taking. I had recommended a more southerly course, like 210, and here we are heading towards the southwest. Yes, my route would mean a slightly longer distance, but when the wind comes, it would be from behind. We're currently motoring, waiting for the wind. And the big question is, how much wind will we get and when will we get it? Because we need some wind to make tracks. Been moving along relatively slowly. So of course I've been pouring over the forecast, trying to figure out what I think is gonna happen here the next, let's say 48 hours. And it brought to mind a, a question that I get quite a bit when people find out that I'm a meteorologist. And that question is, what's the best weather forecasting model? Everybody's got access to the model data now, but how to interpret it? Which model is best? And I'll tell you that that's not how professional forecasters look at forecast models. There isn't a best model in, in general but there can be a better model for a particular situation. So how do we decide which model to pay attention to for a particular weather situation? I'm gonna use a little bit of an analogy that maybe you can draw upon from your, from your personal life. And let's talk about the world of finance and let's say financial planners or brokers who give advice about what's happening in the markets and then you can interpret that advice and hopefully make better decisions to make more money. Let's say that you talked to three financial advisors a year ago and one of them said the world economy is going to heck, go to cash and wait for the sky to fall and then buy things cheap. Another financial advisor said, hey listen, we still got a lot of cash floating around out there. Maybe stay invested in the market a bit. Stocks, a basket, widely diversified, could treat you well. Another financial advisor said, hey, don't pay attention to stocks, don't uh, go all to cash, I think you should be in real estate and buy a ton of gold. All right, that's advice that you got a year ago. Well, if you pay attention to the markets, you know that probably the best play, at least as we stand now, is to stay invested in stocks and maybe diversify a bit, stay in real estate, and uh, if you wanna buy a little bit of gold, fine. Well, we use that same sort of idea when we try and decide which forecasting model we want to pay attention to. And I call this, well, it's known as forecast verification. So when we're looking at a particular situation, we want to look at our basket of models and look at how they've performed over the last couple of, of model runs. So I'll use this example here. Right now we're awaiting a very weak front or it's probably better described as a trough that will arrive. And some troughs are strong with a big wind shift and some just aren't. The winds are light and then the winds pick up from a new direction. So out of our basket of models that I look at with predict wind, and by the way, I highly recommend that if you're doing offshore sailing, you are subscribed to predict wind. Uh, it's just an incredible tool. Uh, if we look at this basket of models with predict wind, I look at yesterday's run and I see that the PWG, their proprietary model, shows that winds are generally light right now. Again, this is the forecast. The PWE shows that the winds are light but are switching over towards the south and southwest. The ECMWF and the GFS also showing relatively light winds. If I look at what's actually happening right now, what reality is, 
the winds, while light, are shifting over towards the south and southeast. I can see it right before my eyes. So I look at the models that were run yesterday and I see that the PWE is verifying the best. So as I look at the new model runs, I am going to put extra weight on the forecast outcome for the PWE. Does that mean that the other models are completely wrong and that I shouldn't even pay attention to them? No way. Just as in the financial markets, the advice that you got a year ago, that advisor, we're gonna put an extra bias and say that that advisor might have a better idea of what's happening in the market, but we're not gonna discount everybody else's advice completely. We have to keep an open mind. So as we look at the forecast uh, that has just been downloaded over the last 20 minutes or so from Predict Win, I'm gonna put my bias or my weight towards the PWE, showing that Yes, we are gonna get the south to southwest increasing just a bit through the midday and afternoon hours. But the convection, the rain, the possibility of an isolated thunderstorm, most of that activity stays to our north. If I look at the other models, like the ECMWF and the GFS, they develop that precipitation a bit more. And we'll have to be wary of stronger wind gusts. So while my bias is going to be towards the PWE, I'm not going to discount what the other models might, uh, might have to say about the situation. You can see how this is kind of a rolling deal and you want to just keep watching the model data over uh, several days to see what the trends are. All right, I'm off watch. I'm going to go get some sleep. Check in with you later. Being a good forecaster means nothing if you don't apply it to your route. And our continued course towards the southwest put us right into the cold front. At first, we were just happy to have some wind to actually be sailing. And at first, conditions were fairly pleasant. But by the second day, the winds were starting to really build and the seas were getting confused. We were down to second reef on the main and double reef on the Genoa as well. This is probably not a nautical term, but I call this skidding out, where the swells are starting to really push the boat around. It's out of whack, it's out of balance, and it's not comfortable. I always like to say there's a huge difference between uncomfortable and dangerous. And this is nowhere near dangerous. The boat handled these conditions just fine but it was uncomfortable and particularly noisy, which made it hard to get rest. And that's an important thing with a shorthanded crew because inevitably everyone gets tired and you end up slowing the boat down so you can get rest. Well, I haven't even eaten it, but I'm gonna give you an A for effort. Yeah. Yeah. I think it. <laughs> this is uh, this is like an aerobics workout <laughs> combined with cooking, with the finishing the rest of uh, everything. Are you, are you getting some leg workout? Yeah. <laughs> Just so it doesn't seem like I'm I'm stretching the truth. I'm gonna verify with my friend because you know sometimes people say, oh yeah, the seas were so big. And it looks small in the videos. And then it looks small in the videos. <laughs> Would you agree? that the seas have calmed a little bit, but we've seen three and four meters. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's, uh, compared to the boat, which is quite big, it's, uh, I agree, yeah. But the, uh, I guess on the video, it won't look the same. No, it'll look <laughs> just like a little surf. I think we've seen a maximum gust of what, like 42? Or something, like this, something yeah. like that, yeah. And I think the, the big difficulty here is 
we've got the wind waves and the swells coming from two different directions. Ooh. Doesn't help to get fast. No. Doesn't help the boat. Well, we'll take what we got. The folks at Uchimer told me I was going to be doing the routing for this trip, but I can only offer my advice. It's up to the captain to decide which direction we go. But at this point, we were getting pounded pretty good. I kept my frustrations to myself. I was frustrated because by going more towards the southwest, we just weren't gaining much in our overall elapsed time. It just wasn't a faster route. So you're not you're not too into the technical routing and routing software. Do you use any routing software? No, I've never used any. So your your routing method is you would say it's more intuitive? Yes. Yes. The, so when you make a decision, it's kind of a gut feeling? It is. It is. We can say that, yes. Um, seeing what is happening around you with the sea, with the swell and the clouds and also what you've seen before at the same place, at the same period um, and yes, I'm, it, it's the old way of doing things I know that nowadays with the internet and everything like that you cannot do it without the help of a software for routing and but I haven't been used to that you do it without. I do without. I can't do it without. <laughs> you're special. You, no, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm young? Yes. <laughs> he said I'm young. How old do you think I am? Oh, I don't know. 35? The point here is not to be a Monday morning quarterback. The point is to say that using modern routing and modern forecasting can really save you a lot of headache and really make for a much smoother ride. Eventually the seas did lay down a bit, but more importantly, we turned down wind. How did this not catch fire? <laughs> because it's made by purpose. <laughs> oh my. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, oh, see? You're, you're a master. Not too bad. Oh. bad. That is really lovely. Look. Oh, that looks delicious. Oh, sorry. Oh, dude. It was great. Yeah? A little smoky. <laughs> That's the touch. That's the, the touch. It's barbecue flavor. Robin and John Mark are great company. These guys are good sailors, relaxed, easygoing, and since none of us are prone to seasickness, uh, the rough weather was really not that big a deal. More or less just annoying. And it was nice to spend the time together because mostly we're on watch by ourselves. Not having Megan aboard was the right thing to do here, but I really miss having her on the trip. When we sail together, it's a lot less regimented. We are on watch together a lot, and our watch periods are flexible. Without Megan, it's kind of just boring. Uh, the boat tends to itself fairly well, and sitting in the main salon at the nav station, you can do pretty much everything you need to do. You're in the center of the boat, and the motion actually isn't all that bad. Overall, I'd say this Uchimer 55 took care of us pretty well. As they say, the boat can handle more than the crew. This video is getting a little long, so I'm going to cut it off now. But this Atlantic journey is just getting started, and there is plenty of action to come. Oh, we lost the spinnaker. We're going to break this into parts, so there's more coming up next week. I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for watching, and an extra special thank you to our patrons. Without our patrons, these videos would not be possible. Take care, everybody. Yeah.